Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and in this lesson we will be going over section 7.6 on geometric series. Here's the chapter outline and of course we can uh, find extra practice questions on pages 459 to 461 of the textbook. Here's the success criteria, we'll go over it really quick right now. We want to explore the characteristics about geometric series, just as, just as we did with uh, arithmetic ser uh, series. We want to be able to calculate the sum of geometric sequences. And we want to learn um, about partial sum for geometric series and its general formula. Last video, we did the partial sum formula for arithmetic series, and the geometric one is a little different. What is a geometric series? Well, as you could have guessed, a geometric series is the sum of the terms in a geometric sequence. Like we can see in the example down here, we have a geometric series, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. You can see that it's geometric because we have a common ratio of 2 between each term, right? So to get to the next term, we simply just multiply by 2 each time. And so the geometric series of this geometric sequence will be the sum of all its terms, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, which will give us a sum of, 30, of 62. So the geometric series is 62. <coughs> now to find the partial sum of a geometric se uh, sequence, we just add the first n terms of the sequence, just like we did with arith arithmetic sequences. So here's the pl blueprint for it. S of n, again, remember we um, show partial sum with this big S with a subscript, and the subscript shows us what term we're going to. So S of n is gonna equal, the partial sum to n is gonna equal term one plus term two plus term three plus term four, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to plus term n, term on the nth term, right? On the nth, uh, sorry, on the nth uh, spot on the sequence, on the nth, lo nth location. Here's the two formulas to calculate the first n terms for a geometric sequence this time. If we remember last time it was arithmetic. These are a little different. The first one is s of n equals a, which is the first term of our sequence, times r, our um, common ratio, you can see down here to the power of n which is the number term we're going to the location we are ending at so if it's s of 4 we know that n is going to equal 4 right so r to the power of n minus 1 all over r minus 1 <laughs> so uh, the common ratio minus 1 on the bottom and we can see that we have a restriction on r r cannot be equal to 1 because it would give us a zero in the denominator, making our um, our equation undefined, and we cannot have that. So that's one version of the equation. Um, the other version is s of n equals t of n plus 1, which is the term after the nth term, right? So if we're going partial sum of the first four terms in the sequence, t of n plus 1 is going to equal term 5 the term after term four, minus the first term in the sequence, which could also be marked as a, all over the ratio, common ratio minus one, and again, the same restriction on r. r cannot be equal to one. So if we know the first term in the sequence, as well as the common ratio between the terms, and of course the term we are going to, the, la the nth term, we use the first equation because those are the variables uh, we need to solve for the partial sum of the first equation. Um, just the first term, common ratio, and nth number. And if we know the common ratio, uh, as well as the first term of the sequence, t1, as well as the nth term of, of the sequence, plus 1, sorry, not the nth term, the term after the nth term, tn plus 1, we would use the second equation because those are the variables we need for the second equation, right? So you have to pick depending on the question.
Now we'll go over a couple of examples using this partial sum equation. So here's our first example. We have a question that says calculate s of 6, so the partial sum of the first six terms, and calculate for the sixth term of the sequence 6, 30, 150, and the sequence goes on. So obviously we are not given the sixth term. We, would have, we have to calculate for it. So we have T1, which is 6. We have T2, which is 30, and we have T3, which is 50. Now, there should be a pattern uh, for this sequence, and we can create a recursive formula to um, represent the sequence. So what is the pattern? Well, if we can notice, T of n is going to equal T of n minus 1, the term before, times 5. Because we can see that from 6 to 30, we multiply by 5. And from 30 to 150, we multiply by 5. And this should be a geometric sequence as we have the same ratio between those two terms. So if we keep going, we should keep multiplying by 5 to get the next few terms. So let's do that. Here's our recursive formula. We'll just box it in so we know we have it. So we need to get to term 6. And we're at term 3. So if we want term 4, we equal... 5 times term of 4 minus 1, which is term 3. It's going to be 5 times 150, which is going to give us 750. Now for term 5, we're going to have 5 times term 4, which we just calculated. It's 750 times 5. It's going to equal 3,750. Now term 6, which is what we're looking for, is going to equal 5 times term 5, which is going to equal 5 times 3,750, which is going to give us 18,750. Therefore, T6 equals 18,750, and that's our answer. Now we've got to calculate for the partial sum for the first six terms. <coughs> so S of six is gonna equal the first six terms added up. So T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5 plus T6, right? So S6, <coughs> if we plug in all our terms in our sequence, T1 is gonna be six plus T2 is gonna be 30 T3 is going to be 150. T4, we calculated, is going to be 750 plus um, term 5, which is going to be 3,750 plus term 6, which we calculated to be 18,750. Now, if we add all those up, we have 6 plus 30 plus 150 plus 750, plus 3,750, plus 18,750. It's going to give us a sum of 23,436. And that will be our partial sum of the first six terms of the sequence. And that's it. Here's our second example. It says calculate for, again, the first six terms of the sequence and the sixth term of the sequence of the sequence 4 over 5, 8 over 15, 16 over 45, and etc. So um, we see that we have a kind of a rational sequence now, right? We have um, all the all the terms are, are fractions. So we want to do like we did in the uh, last, I don't know if it was the last video or the video before that, where we want to find the pattern with the numerators and the pattern with the denominators. And we can create a general term to express the numerators, numerators and denominators. So if we just take out the numerators from the question, we're going to get a sequence of 4, 18, 16, and etc. And we want to find a pattern with these numbers. And let's see what it is. Well, we can clearly see that to get from one term to the other, we are simply just multiplying 
by 2, right? So instead of a general term, we can actually write a recursive formula for the, um, for the numerators. So a recursive formula could be t numerator t of n equals t of n minus 1 times 2. Simply that for the numerators, we'll box that in. And for the denominator, we have 5, 15, and 45, and etc. So what is the pattern with these? Well, we can also clearly see that to get to, from one term to the other, we can simply just multiply by 3, not 5. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3 is 45. So our denominator recursive formula is going to be 3 times tn minus 1. So that's going to be our formula for our numerator and our denominator. So our final recursive formula is going to be tn equals 2tn minus 1 over 3tn minus 1. All right, so we have up to term 3 because this is term 1, <coughs> term 2, and term 3. So let's keep going and calculate for term 6, which is what we need. Term th uh, 4. It's going to be 2 times term 3 over 3 times term 3. It's going to equal 2 times, oh, not term 3 completely. It's going to be just the numerator part of term 3. And here, just the denominator part of term 3. All right? Because remember, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by term 3, right, we are going to get 2 times 16 over 45, 3 times 16 over 45, which will not get us the answer. We need to multiply um, by the numerator and denominator because this is the pattern for just the numerator, not the whole sequence. And this is the pattern for the denominator, not the whole sequence, right? So we want to multiply 2 times 16 and 3 times 45, right? So we're going to get 32 all over 135. That's going to be our term 4. Now our term 5 is going to be 2 times the numerator of term 4 and 3 times the denominator of term 4, which is going to equal 2 times 32 over 3 times 135, right? This fraction that we just found right here. Going to give us 64 all over 3 times 135, which is 405. Now, finally, we want to calculate for term 6, which is going to be 2 times the numerator of term 5 times 3 times the denominator, sorry, over 3 times the denominator of term 5, which is going to equal 2 times 64 over 3 times 405, which is going to equal. 128 all over 1215 and that's our term 6 which we'll write up here so we can have a little more space for the partial sum so t6 therefore t6 equals 128 all over 1215 that's our term 6 now we want to calculate for our partial sum which is going to be the first six terms added up together. So it's T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5 plus T6. And that will equal our first term is 4 over 5. Our second term is 8 over 15. Next term is 16 over 45. And now the terms we calculated, T4 is 32 over 135 plus 64 over 405 plus 128 over 1215. Now, bring it back here because we don't have any space. S6 equals, if we kind of just put this all into our calculator, we could find all the common denominators to calculate for all this. You can do that on your own to challenge yourself, but just for the video's sake, I'm just going to put them into my calculator. 
So 4 over 5 plus 8 over 15 plus 16 over 45 plus 32 over 135 plus 64 over 405 plus 128 over 1215 is going to get us 532 all over 243. And that will be our final answer for S6. Okay. And that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope uh, section 7.6 was uh, clear for you guys and you were able to understand everything. And I'll see you in the next one.